hello everybody and welcome to the first day of our SIPS International Students Week of Celebrations and my goodness I've just been going through the chat it's great to see so many people here from so many different regions I've just been jotting them down Oman, Japan, India, Indonesia, Trinidad, Nigeria, Uganda, loads of you from um, the UK and across Europe and Cheryl in Melbourne it's very late so thank you for joining us today. Um, this is day one of our week of, of webinars so there'll be loads of other stuff going on throughout the week and Becky will give you more details about the topic that we'll be covering so make sure you join join in i'm emma scott i'm representative representation manager here at sips and i'm an m sips chartered professional too so hopefully giving you some insights i won't even tell you how many years ago it was that i sat my sips exams but we've all we've all got some information to share with you today to help you on your journey so today's webinar is all about giving you the information and confidence you need to get started on your professional learning journey with sips or maybe you've started and stopped studying and and you're thinking about restarting again so we'll go through all of those things with you we're going to spend about 15 minutes talking to you about the qualifications route and becoming an MSIPS chartered professional look we want to make these these sessions as interactive as possible so make sure that you submit your questions to the Q&A um, so to our panelists so we'll have a session at the end uh, where you can put your questions forward and, and make sure you continue to use this chat function and network with some of your uh, colleagues all of these sessions will be recorded throughout the week. So if you can't make any of them, don't worry. Um, they'll be available um, next week and we'll upload them on the website. But now I'm delighted to welcome my colleague, Becky Winrow, who is Marketing Manager for Education here at SIPS. And she's gonna send uh, the next 15 minutes or so uh, chatting to you about the amazing benefits of becoming MSIPS Chartered Professional and, and how you can get through there through taking the SIPS internationally recognized qualifications. Becky, it's over to you. Hi, Emma. Oh, thanks so much. What a great introduction and yes, Wow, can't believe how many people we've got from all over the world. Uh, we've currently got 169 participants on the webinar. Uh, we may get many more join us yet. So it's a really great opportunity for us to come and speak to you today. So firstly, just before we get started, I just want on behalf of everyone at SIPS, I'd just like to wish all SIPS students currently taking their CR exams this week and all of those who did their OR exams last week, every success. We know how much hard work and dedication it's taken for you to all get to exam day. So good luck to everyone. Okay, so as Emma has mentioned, um, over the next four days, we're gonna provide you with lots of useful information and resources to help you to make the most of your learning journey through SIPS qualifications. SIPS has members all over the world who are really proud of their profession and will do all they can uh, to support those who are new to the profession and striving to develop their career. So just before we get started, I'm just gonna go into the slides right now, but we're just gonna do a quick poll just to get an idea of um, how, what different stages everybody's at who's on the webinar. So if you can just take a minute just to answer the poll quickly. Uh, whilst you're doing that, uh, I'm just gonna share with you a web page um, that we've uh, launched today. Uh, you can access this from the home page and there'll be a link to it at the end of the webinar. Uh, and it's packed with student stories and podcasts. Um, and during the next week, we'll be posting more stuff up there as well. Um, so do take a look at that. Um, do take a look at it over the next few days. Um, so, okay, not quite sure of the poll results just yet. So I just wanna mention at this stage on the dedicate, oh, there we go. 76% of you are currently studying members and 24% of you aren't. So specifically for that 24%, uh, you might wanna take a look at the uh, offer that we've got at the moment. There's a special offer running from now until the end of December. Uh, and that is for anybody who joins or anybody who may have lapsed and wants to rejoin. Uh, it has a, a value offer of up to 50 pounds. So if you are considering joining and getting started on your qualifications journey, or you might have had your membership lapse and you want to rejoin, now is the time to do it because this offer is there and there is a code that you need to fill in online as you take advantage of that offer. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. Um, so I wanted to talk to you just very quickly. Here's just a quick reminder of the other webinars that sessions that we're gonna run this week. So today is all about reinforcing the value of investing in SIPs qualifications and becoming MSIPs Chartered Professional. 
tomorrow, we'll go through the exam guidance and the study skills with lots of study, uh, student zone orientation. And this will help you to find the SIPs created resources um, that we've got to uh, support your studies while you're on that qualifications journey. On Thursday, uh, we will help you to create your career development plan. It's great to have a career goal, such as becoming MSIPs Chartered, um, but what's your plan to get there? Okay, and that's what we'll do on, on Friday. And sorry, on Thursday. And then on Friday, we will be joined by volunteers from around the world who will talk to you about their experiences of being a SIPS volunteer or being part of the SIPS volunteer network and how it has helped them to develop their career and how it helped them when they were studying as well. Okay, so I'm going to crack on and go through about 15 minutes worth of slides now, and then we'll go to the Q&A panel and um, answer some questions at the end. So as I've mentioned, Today is all about covering the amazing benefits and opportunities that you open yourself to when you become a MSIPS Chartered Procurement and Supply Professional. So the next few days are all about reassuring any concerns that you may have about getting started or getting your learning journey, <coughs> excuse me, on track. So let's just start with the basics. Um, what is MSIPS? What is MSIPS Chartered Professional? What does it stand for? So it's a designation and it's awarded to individuals who've demonstrated and been assessed by SIPs as a professional body to have achieved a high level of competency and skill in procurement and supply. That level of competency is recognised at the same level as an honours degree qualification. So just to be specific, MSIPs is not a degree, it's a professional designation and it can only be awarded to those who have evidenced degree level competence in procurement and supply. So anyone you meet, anyone you know who is an individual who's applied to be MSIPs, they have had to meet certain criteria um, to, to be able to use that designation. Uh, and it represents, it really demonstrates that they've already achieved this level of competence. They must also um, provide evidence of a minimum of three years experience of working in the procurement and supply management role and must have taken the SIPs ethics test, which really makes a statement about how you commit to practice procurement and supply in your role. So in summary, by adding that your MSIPs chartered to your CV, LinkedIn profile, or wherever you choose to promote your professional competence, it means that you've attained and been assessed to an honours degree level of competency and that you've maintained that competence through a 30 hours of CPD continuing professional development. So this is your lifelong learning commitment, plus your three years experience and your annual ethics test. All of that culminates together in the designation MSIPS Chartered Professional. So today, many of you may already be well on your journey to being MSIPS Chartered Professional or just starting out. Ultimately, by studying, for and achieving the qualification, you'll become more successful, successful, more confident, uh, you'll have your competency to demonstrate, you'll be more in demand by employers, uh, and as a qualified procurement professional, you become the trusted advisor for your organisation and its stakeholders. So SIP's role in all this as a professional body is to provide you with that balance of technical and generalist management skill, which is required by the profession. And we do this through the five levels of qualifications. So we are regulated as an awarding body. And this means that uh, our qualifications are scrutinized externally by regulators around the world. And this is to make sure that they are fit for the profession today and in the future. So service qualifications have been created to build the knowledge, skills and competencies for providing a procurement and supply management role in the profession. So each of the qualifications is broken down and it's broken down into modules, uh, which all have a blend of technical skills, such as, for example, commercial negotiation, contracts and sourcing. These are then complemented by more generalist business related topics, such as managing teams, managing individuals, project management, and then at the higher levels, corporate strategy, leadership skills. So therefore, SIPs qualifications provide you with a balance of technical procurement and supply skill set, also complemented with the broader general management skill set required of a procurement and supply professional. So ultimately, these qualifications are designed to support you in your role and make sure that you're ready for the future. 
So we work with the profession to know and understand exactly what their requirements are for competent um, practicing procurement and supply professionals. We take all that information and we translate that into a syllabus. And that's what becomes the suite of regulated qualifications so that it reflects the needs of employers. Okay, so for anyone new to joining SIPs or thinking about starting their journey to becoming MSIPs Charter Professional, over the next few slides, we're just gonna talk through um, how you can get started. And we'll talk to you about your different options for studying along the way. And there'll be some good information in here as well, just for, to help those that are already studying. So by becoming MSIPs Chartered, we've already discussed that you're demonstrating to the world that you're actively committed to further developing your expertise as a professional. By choosing to study SIPs qualifications as your route to MSIPs Chartered, you can choose the pace at which you learn and take exams. There are a number of different study methods that you can choose, and we're going to come to that shortly. The key point for you is for you to take a look at your own personal circumstances, the amount of time you can commit to studying, and also the cost of taking the exams and buying the resources. So by joining SIPs as a student member before you start your studies, you'll get access to lots of resources and these will help you in your role as you study. And in the webinar session tomorrow, you can find out more about the study resources that you'll get to access as you become a member. So as well as the study resources, you'll also become connected to the SIPS Global Network. And again, on Friday, we're going to talk to you about that in much more detail. Uh, but you can also tap into the activities that a lot of our volunteer network and our resources put on um, by joining any of the uh, topic -led webinars and events that we're running. Again, we'll come into more detail on that tomorrow. Okay, so let's just talk here now about the different ways to get started. So there's several different pathways to achieving MSIPs um, and all of them, all of these different uh, professional recognition pathways lead to MSIPs chartered. <clears throat> and they're all, excuse me, they're all underpinned in the same way. So we're focusing on the qualifications today, which is that top pathway that you can see there, the circles at the top. So there are three optional starting points to a SIPs qualifications pathway. You can start at the level two certificate, or level three advanced certificate in procurement and supply operations. Or you can start at the level four diploma. The diploma is the highest entry point for anyone starting on their SIPs qualifications pathway. So now if you're not sure which is the best level uh, for you to start at, to start your studies at, I suggest you read the entry criteria and the syllabus for each of these three qualifications as a guide. They're all available on the SIPS website. If you go into the Learn tab, uh, each qualification level has a syllabus. And here is where you'll find the entry requirements and all of the learning content. So you could take a look at those, look at the topic names uh, in each of the modules and see how this resonates with you in your role. This will give you an indication of the right level to start from. You could also talk to any one of our uh, network of accredited study centers. They're all experts in providing students with the information they need to get started on a qualifications journey, and they offer a variety of study methods. Um, on the dedicated web page I showed you earlier, there's a link through to finding the different study centres, uh, and you can use that after the webinar. So I'm just going to give you a very quick example now for someone starting their SIPs qualifications pathway at the level four diploma, so that's the highest entry point starting at that level. So you'd need to have at least a minimum of two A-levels or international equivalent, or have two years relevant experience in a procurement and supply management role to be eligible to start at that level. The qualification then covers the whole of the procurement and supply cycle. You'll explore models, tools, and theories used in procurement and supply roles at an operational level. For, to complete this qualification successfully, you'll take eight exams. And when they're awarded, then you can move on your pathway to become an MSIPs chartered. You would then go on to complete the level five advanced diploma and then the level six professional diploma. Now it's the culmination of all three, level four, level five, level six, plus meeting all of the other criteria I mentioned to you in the first slide for you to become eligible to apply for MSIPs for a membership upgrade to MSIPs. And it's also at that point, then you can enhance your MSIPs upgrade to chartered professional status. And that's all at no extra cost. Your membership just needs to be up to date and you need to have just followed up that pathway. It's a really simple exercise to do once you've completed. 
So just to tie in the qualifications, so the qualifications have been created based on the competency descriptors uh, from the SIPS Global Standard in Procurement and Supply. This is a free resource that you can access on our website. The standard is a competency framework uh, that it's, SIPS has created alongside the profession. And within it, it defines the skills, the knowledge, the different uh, and, and the competencies that an individual needs uh, to operate at the different um, levels in procurement. So from a tactical role through to an advanced professional roles. And there's um, job titles with each of these um, uh, competency descriptors as well that give you an indication of the type of roles you'll be doing as you go through these different levels uh, of the qualifications and the global standard. Okay, so just a quick check in now uh, on what we've covered for you so far. So if you're wondering where to start, go to the website, download the syllabus, take a look at the topics, see what resonates with you and then consider your starting point. Remember level four is the highest entry point for anyone starting the qualifications journey. If the content within there seems like it's too much, it's not something that you're doing, then try reading the topics in level two and level three and it might be a more suitable place for you to start. We don't want any students to have to repeat any learning. So if you can evidence uh, previous qualifications for topics in any of the qualifications, uh, you can apply for an exemption and it could speed up your learning journey. So take a look at the exemptions policy. That's at the learn tab again, uh, just down at the bottom there, just scroll down and you'll find that policy. Planning your study time as you study is essential. So planning your time as you study is essential. If you take a look at each of the qualifications in the syllabus, each one has a credit value. So for example, levels four, five, and six, they each have a credit value of 60, 60 credits. For each credit, we recommend that an individual, do, a student does uh, 10 hours of study. Um, so if you think uh, for the uh, level four, you're looking at around 600 hours of total qualification learning time, including your exams. Um, tomorrow's session will cover in much more detail how you could plan that study time and how you can break it up into the different types of learning. So SIPS provides a student zone and we've created lots of content in there to support your learning. There's lots of exam techniques guides. We've just uploaded two new videos uh, which help you prepare for the different types of exam questions you can expect. We've also mapped all of SIPS, uh, sorry, all of the syllabus to SIPS knowledge um, for the relevant modules. So you can dip into the knowledge there to support your learning and it can help you expand uh, on your knowledge. Majority of that will be gated content. So you will need to be a studying member to access that. In addition, SIPS also produces study guides uh, for each of the modules. There's a hard copy book. Um, and if you prefer to learn online, there is also an e-book version. Um, and then there's also e-learning, which further tests your knowledge from within the study guides. We don't recommend you buy the e-learning in isolation. You, it complements what you learn in the study guides. So each of these resources has been designed to enhance and test what you've learned as you're working through the learning outcomes for each of the modules. They're all available to buy on the website and they're individually priced because of the different level, sorry, the different um, modules are priced differently depending on the size of the module. So you can also engage in uh, any, any of the events uh, and, uh, and webinars that we host. Um, many of them are on specific topics uh, run by uh, SIPS Volunteer Network or run by SIPS, and it'll help you gain different perspective. And don't be afraid to ask questions on these events. If you join a webinar, many of them are hosted by SIPS members. So ask them a question. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. They're all, wait they're all doing this to support people just like you uh, on your qualifications journeys. If you subscribe to the SIPS YouTube channel, uh, you can get access to past, pay, uh, past webinars, uh, interviews, podcasts, many of them will be relevant to the topics that you're studying. Another question that we are often asked is, um, how quickly will I qualify? So this will really vary as it depends on your own personal and work circumstances as to how much time you can commit and your budget. So figure out your pathway and your different avenues of support that you can tap into. Work out your budget and affordability before getting started. Deciding on how you will study, again, will depend on your personal circumstances. Um, you may prefer studying with tuition or you may prefer to self-study. So thinking about how you prefer to study, there's benefits of both, uh, tutor-led learning and studying on your own. With a SIPS accredited study center, you'll sign up for a program of learning. 
This will lead you to taking exams and you'll be progressing with a cohort of other students so you can share your experience um, as you go along. The tutors will be able to give you their expert support, expert support uh, and guidance and they'll set work for you and organise revision sessions and so on. So there's lots of support by going with an accredited study centre as you learn. However, if you choose to self-study, then you'll be relying on the study resources and going along at your own speed. It really does depend on your circumstances. So another question we're often asked is, what's the cost of doing a SIPS qualification? I've done a very simple rough uh, summary here of all of the costs that you can expect to pay for completing the level four diploma. So for example, you're looking at an investment of around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, and obviously there'll be an equivalent in your local currency for, just for you to work out there. So the cost will vary depending on geography. So we do have an online fee finder um, for membership and exams, and then there's the cost of your resources as well. So this example shows approximately 1,400 pounds, and it covers an annual student membership fee, um, the cost of uh, the exams, and the full total study toolkit. So that would be a book, an ebook, and e-learning. You might want to reduce that. This doesn't include the cost of tuition. SIPs uh, approved study centres who provide the tuition uh, will give you more information about the different costs for their services. And you'll find a link to these on the dedicated um, Students' Day webpage uh, that I shared with you, and you'll be able to find it on the main website as well. It is just a rough costing, but just gives you an idea. OK, so what's your reward for this investment? Um, so SIPS does an annual salary survey across all of the different regions that we work in. Um, so here are just some top line figures just to give you an indication of your reward once you become um, SIPS uh, Chartered Professional. So in the UK, for example, 64% of employers prefer candidates with MSIPS. And you'll find that this is reflected as well in some of the podcasts and the case studies that we've shared on the dedicated web page that we've, I showed you earlier. Uh, in a sub-Saharan Africa region, that's an 82% of employers uh, prefer candidates with MSIPs. Um, and in Australia and New Zealand, um, those with MSIPs earn up to 31% more than colleagues who are not uh, MSIPs. And in our MENA region, uh, that's a difference of 46% more than non-MSIPs uh, non uh, chartered professionals. So it's always worth having a look at the salary survey as well. You'll find that in the knowledge area on the website and take a look at what you could be earning and what kind of benefits you should be expecting when you become MSIPs chartered. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I think I've given you a big blast of information there. I'm conscious that we've only got about eight or nine minutes left. So I'm going to stop sharing and... Um, Welcome back our panel. Hi, Emma. Hi. Thanks, Becky. Brilliant. At this stage, I'm also going to welcome um, Nicola Robinson, our um, head of membership as well, to join the panel. And I'm going to rattle through some of these questions in, in the time we've got left. So thank you, everyone, for submitting some questions. And we also, um, our team have been busy replying to as many as possible um, on the screen as we go along. Um, but in, in your opinion, we had this email through, what was, um, what's the biggest advantage of becoming MSIPs chartered? Are you okay to tell that one, Nicola? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, just pause. Uh, so, blimey, what's the, what's the biggest advantage? So I think Becky's mentioned a number of things through the presentation. So ultimately, MSIPS Chartered really does differentiate you as an individual in, in, in the profession. So it's kind of, I kind of, we kind of see it as a, as a global declaration of, you know, announcing your credibility, your yeah. commitment to your learning and to staying current. Um, I think a phenomenal part of MSIPS Chartered that does really differentiate you is the ethics. So as you'll know from starting your journey with SIPS, each year you um, undertake your membership, you sign up to the Code of Conduct. So the Code of Conduct gives one kind of one level, if you like, of commitment to ethical practice, conduct and behaviour. But then chartered status kind of takes you, a, a, you know, above and beyond that as well, because yeah. you undertake the ethics test each year. And, you know, it's really signifying that you're, you, you value ethics and ethical practice um, and ethical values and Absolutely. really shines a light on your, yeah. shines a light on your credibility. 
I think it really does show how how relevant your your skills are and how responsible yeah. your skills are. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, we talked a bit about um, the CPD that's required, and also I guess this is relevant for um, study resources. But what you know, when we talk about CPD, it doesn't always have to be formal training courses. There's lots of no. ways that people can get in. Can you give some examples, Becky, of some things that people can access? Yeah, sure. I mean, we've got all of the events and webinars that are put on around the world and we send emails to our students, to all members actually, every week, inviting you to uh, come to these events. They're a great way. You could read some content. You could sign up to supply management, um, daily uh, email alerts. You'll get, a once you join, you'll actually um, become, uh, start to receive a regional email as well. So it could be much more relevant to news that's going on in your area. All of that counts for your CPD um, and, and you can log that, you can log it in uh, yourself and then at the, you can self-declare uh, your CPD at the end of the year when it comes to your upgrade. But yeah, it, it doesn't have to be formal training. Yeah. It's certainly about, you know, it's about how you acquire new information and recording that and recognizing that you've acquired that new information. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be from SIPs either. It could be from no, no. Um, all different um, sources. Yeah. And I'd, yeah. I'd recommend everyone signing up to Supply Management daily as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Some yeah. push to your inbox every day. Um, so if you've stopped started, if you've stopped studying and then you want to start again, um, how, how easy or difficult is that? Is the period between you stopping and starting a, a factor? Yeah, um, and we recently changed the qualifications in 2018. So it depends, I suppose, how far back the break uh, goes. But the, the beauty of the qualifications is you can kind of hop on and off as and when, when you need to really, and you can certainly go at your own pace. Um, so anybody who's uh, did the qualifications prior to this new one launched in 2018, there is a section in the Learn, uh, the, yeah, the Learn tab on the website that go goes back to different things you need to know about getting your, your journey restarted. So you can see how it's switched from the old to the new qualifications. Also, rejoin, uh, do take advantage of the offer that we've got at the moment, rejoin, and then within your account, it'll show you how what you did before counts towards the new syllabus. And it's as simple as that, really. You can then register either with a study centre or you can start studying on your own and start entering for exams as well. So all the guidance is there. Um, it's just a case of rejoining, finding your time, finding the budget, finding the, the resources and starting again. And I mean, we're talking specifically about the qualification route today, but we have had a couple of questions about our corporate award and, and whether you could switch from one to another, uh, whether that makes it quicker or not. Um, switching is quite tricky because mm. the corporate award is done in two stages, whereas the um, SIPs qualifications is broken up into the five um, individual qualifications. And it's not quite clear cut as to where the crossover is across, especially ar around the, um, the advanced diploma level and then the level six professional diploma level, a bit more clear cut up to the end of the level four. So it can be done, but you may have to kind of go back a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's certainly be worth talking to um, some of our um, sales team and be able to give advice on that. Excellent. Great. Yeah, um, yeah I just, I just add. I'd just add to that, Emma, if that's OK. Um, I think what Becky was just saying, you know, translating what you've done and the value, if you, you know, what you've done in qualifications across into the corporate ward isn't isn't it's, it's not a straightforward. But as Becky said, you know, especially for people, if you haven't studied for a long time and perhaps if you're looking at a different method or something that fits in in a different way to your lifestyle, um, or to where you are then yeah and in the last few months we're delighted we've launched digital delivery of that so yeah so it's a it's a good alternative and our SIPs for our developed SIPs for business team can can discuss that if necessary we've had quite a few questions actually come through that we're, we're not going to have time for but um, if I could encourage everyone to go on to LinkedIn or our social channels mm -hmm. post some questions and we'll try and get back to as many of you as possible so on LinkedIn there's the SIPs Connect and, and Exchange uh, group um, everyone's free to join that and either um, someone from SIPs or from the community can hop on and, and answer your questions but thank you very much for for your engagement that brings us an end today for our, our um our webinar so thank you to Becky and to Nicola for your time um, and everyone for joining us uh, uh, like I said this recording it, um, this session was recorded and it will be available um, 
on the website next week I will have a dedicated SIPS International Students webpage um, and you can the link will come on in a sec on our closing slide and you'll also be able to find out that um, through the homepage you'll be able to find it through the homepage. If you decide to join or rejoin SIPS online from now until the 31st of December We'll, uh, there's a special offer code that will come up at second in the end um, and that will waive your administration fee. So that offer is worth up to £50. Um, excellent. So we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow where we've yep. got uh, your study experience brought to life. Um, we'll in introduce you to all the SIPs created learning resources that can help you with your qualifications and where to find them. So thank you again for joining. It's great to see so many people from thank all you. the different regions. So yeah. thanks a lot and stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.